All right, uh, let's go talk with Piper. Who said you were invited to start with? We need help, Piper. This man named Kellogg kidnapped my baby. But that wasn't all. He was working with the Institute. He, he gave them Sean. The Institute. Oh boy. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. One whole year? Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night, and sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there. But to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is, or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg? Huh. Whatever you're thinking, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah, I knew he wasn't going to go quietly the moment I saw him. So, a um, murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh. Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. He wasn't going to talk. Even if I had a way of bringing him alive. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a vault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. I hope you're right, Nick. Let's see. I guess we're gonna need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Amari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads. Nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this... This thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so... Who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. If you want to head there together, just say so. Of course we'll take Nick. It's you and me, Nick. Let's get going. Don't worry. We're gonna get you a boy back. Just a few more steps. Sorry, While Piper. You two are out, <laughs> I'm gonna do some more research. I'll be here if you need me. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do after Dangerous Minds is do some stuff with Nick. Um, we're going to solve his cases and going to go through one of my favorite dungeons in the game. It's just the the ambiance, the, the environment, the story that's told, the narrator of the story. Uh, it's one of my favorite places. And it fits so well with this detective kind of I don't know, creation, I guess. I'm not really a detective, but more like a superhero. Lowest place in the <laughs> This 
Mr. Valentine. I thought you had forgotten about the Lomi. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. That sort of line work on most women? <laughs> Yo, Dr. Amari. Dr. Amari? Yes. Don't don't yell. The memory inducement. Vault 111, right? What's this all about? Well, you see. You're the one who can extract memories from a brain, right? <laughs> Normally, we only allow our clients to experience their own memories. Now, what's this all about? <laughs> She's already need a suspicious. Deep dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Come on, like you've never defiled a corpse before. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who could make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll, I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Defiled piece right here. <laughs> Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... <laughs> that's good. Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. Have you seen your own neural similar. interface, Nick? From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. Hey, I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. Oh. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. It just Valentine. goes right in back there, huh? Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. How do you lock memories? The implant is encoding all the mnemonic activity in the hippocampus. Think of it like computer encryption. And we don't have the password. Let's see. A single mind wouldn't be able to crack it. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right, let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. Oh, uh, yeah. Just like that. You on the other side. <laughs> Nick. Sit down if you're ready. Let's do this. Okay, he doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't like the whole idea at all. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. They might not be stable. This is good to know. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. 
The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. Uh -huh. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Mm -hmm. So this is basically just the story of Kellogg, you know. It's Bethesda's attempt to justify his behavior. Remember, you are experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. <laughs> My God. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless. But you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. Wow. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. Well, he's already got the hammer pulled I, back. I will. I promise. We'll let you down. Just, just, just pointing at anything and everything. <laughs> Dr. Amari. Hmm, that's not the right spot. another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. San Francisco? It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Sarah, you're gonna give a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just. Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know, but that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. Anything you want. A little Mary, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Somehow the Golden Gate Bridge is perfectly intact. So, whatever they did, they didn't bomb one of the most important arteries in and out of the city. So that seems like a bad military plan. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us and we wouldn't fuck with you? Mm, doesn't sound good. Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. Okay then. I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Uh, you. You get tangled up with bad people. Bad things tend to happen. Sorry, buddy. Mind if we uh, sit down? Suit yourself. Oh, he, he moved up to metal armor now. He's a much tougher guy. He's got so, um, a bad knee at this point. Take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you just, just a merc. 
just a merc. Moving on. We seem to be getting closer. Yep. Try this next one. Yeah. Starting to make a name for himself. He got better gear now. Well, well, well. I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. Huh. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive. Are you looking at me, son? What are you looking at? This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. That's a problem for you. I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Okay, then. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Yeah, now after you all your protection got smoked. One of these has got to tell us something. You're like, shit, man, maybe We're I should renegotiate our terms. Ah, oh, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Oh, God, here we go. I'll try to locate another memory uh -huh. as quickly as I can. Please try to remain calm. Oh, uh, that's actually very um, sympathetic by Dr. Amari. She's like, oh god, here we go again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. We don't have to relive that whole scene again. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory. So, good news, I think. My exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. are going to roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. Okay. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Alrighty then. So he was going to go on about how he's going to miss the kid. Okay. I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? Psychopath, they're going to blow your head off. Oh, I don't know. Um. I'm okay, doctor. Thank you. That's good. But I want you to keep monitoring yourself. We have to be sure there's no long-term damage. 
Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? We got what we needed. The Institute uses teleportation to get in and out. Yes, their greatest secret has finally been revealed. But that only leads to more questions. How does it work? Where do we go next? That scientist Kellogg was supposed to track down. Virgil. We need to find him. You're right. A rogue Institute scientist could answer all kinds of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That doesn't make sense. No one goes there. Not even if they were desperate. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. <gasps> he's using the radiation and the glowing sea like a shield or a cloak, a way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. I'll find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck. Not worrying. And be safe. Okay. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Okay then. I just got a bunch of goodies to take, but I'm not going to take them right now. Uh, we will not do the glowing sea now. We're going to do some detective cases because, you know, we've got Nick. We can do his quest. Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. You want to try for round two? Let's go. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> you feeling all right, Nick? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Let's get going, Nick. Been one heck of a ride so far. Let's see where it takes us next. I'm wondering. No, let's go back to Diamond City and. Uh... I think we ought to talk. All right. Is something the matter? You sound upset. What? Oh no, no. We've just been traveling a while now, and I figure there hasn't exactly been equitable distribution of information. Gotten a decent glimpse into your dirty laundry, but you still don't really know a whole heck of a lot about me. I figure that offer to balance the board. So, is there anything you want to know? So, who are you, Nick? That's a question I've been trying to figure out myself for a long damn time. I know I'm a synth. Authentic Institute handiwork. But I'm still mechanical. Not bioengineered like the fancy synths giving everyone the willies these days. I get tune-ups now instead of checkups. But my memories, my personality, they're all lifted from some cop who volunteered for an experiment back before the war. They scanned his brain and copied it onto the hardware that runs between my ears. Don't know why they chose to make a robot based on some pre-war cop instead of a math genius or a bioengineer. Hey. Maybe that's why the Institute tossed me in the garbage instead of turning me into one of their people snatchers. <laughs> Wait, the original Nick was from my time? Sure was. Which meant when I finally ended up out here, it was quite the rude awakening. I remember waking up one day in a garbage heap, a body in tatters and a head full of memories belonging to a man who'd been dead for 200 years. Suffice to say, it was a confusing couple of weeks. Folks didn't really know much about synths back then, so when I finally ran into people, they mostly treated me with caution rather than hostility. But the kids, <laughs> they weren't afraid. I think his name was Jim. The first person to actually speak to me after I got the boot from the Institute. My first human contact in this world. Grilled me for an hour. Once they'd seen I wasn't going to hurt anyone, the other folks in the neighborhood came out to ogle the mechanical man. It eventually turned into a pretty swell soiree. A local mechanic even gave me a once-over, free of charge. Those people, they, they treated me like a human being. I've been 
trying to return the favor ever since. It's a surprisingly rare trait out here sometimes, and something I've noticed you got a fondness for. Part of the reason I've stuck around this long. Where's that town? We should go visit. I tried to go back and say thanks once I'd gotten myself established, but the place was wiped off the map. Raiders. Don't know what happened to the people. If you're good to people, they'll be good back. That's something I've always believed. Couldn't agree more. Well, I expect you're about as bored as can be listening to me rattle my skeletons. We should probably head out. Okay, then. Back to Diamond City. <laughs> Let's see. What kind of stuff is in my inventory that we can get rid of? Some buff out. Some mintats. Psycho. I hope you're buying. Even a girl with an arsenal full of weapons needs to make a living after all. Of course I'm buying. I'll take a look. Sure. Let's get you outfitted, killer. <laughs> we can buy those for Nick. He's gonna run out because you know, <laughs> they're really bad shots and Those things aren't worth anything. Wow. Okay. Oh, wait. Do we have some? Um. We have that. Oh, my gosh. I need that garbage. We have these books. These subway. Oh, no, no. You can't have that. <laughs> you can have this though. <laughs> See me Christmas. You can take some of these fusion cells. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Doing a collection or something? You see that big one? Why are they here? That's <laughs> a question. Why are they here? while you and Nick were out. Ready to put on the detective hat? Tell me more. Our client is a fisherman who lives on the edge of the Commonwealth, Kenji Nakano. Nakano? Huh. That name takes me back. Hmm. My memory's a little fuzzy on the details, though. Maybe if you bothered writing things down, Nick. Can't well. do that. Wouldn't want to put you out of a job. Huh. I'll remember that the next time you need me to console a hysterical client. Mr. Nakano didn't leave many details. Said he'd go over everything when you meet him. But if you want my guess, missing person case. Guy had a worried look a mile long. I'll go check it out. Thanks, Ellie. The Nakano residence is up in the northeast, near the coast. A small fishing house. He said that he and his wife will be waiting for you. It's a long walk. That's how the hard cases always start. <laughs> All right, let's do uh, let's do what's this one? Marty Bullfinch case. Be careful when you head over to the Nakano residence. That whole area is pretty isolated. And this the one? Bullfinch case. Marty was Nick's partner. Emphasis on the was. He must have been some kind of desperate to come to us for help after all this time. Marty and I never exactly saw eye to eye. Mostly because he was usually passed out on the barroom floor. <laughs> Oh. What? Quit? Robco. <laughs> That's the one I'm thinking of. Oh. 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 Oh.
disappeared one day. No one's seen him since. your take on the case, Ellie? On her own? Well, he didn't have any enemies, that's for sure. Someone would have to notice you're alive first. And Earl didn't exactly have the charisma to inspire any crimes of passion. What's that leave us? I don't know, Nick. It can't be the Institute, right? Hmm. I guess we'll just have to see. Okay, thank you. I wonder what the story is between Mr. Nakano and Nick. Well, you work here, don't you? You don't just write notes down, do you? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's hit up those cases. The Earl Sterling and the Marty Bullfinch case. Um, first. Actually, we can do that here in just a second. But we'll just start that in the next video. Before we do Earl Sterling, though, I think we should probably check out this Randolph safe house um, oh cool it's, oh, it's right there Fairlane Hill Estate. let's check that out just make sure that it doesn't send us to the exact same place as the Earl Sterling case uh, we'll do that in the next video